Well, the count is on everyone. It's now day 43 of Bola Tinubu's presidency, and we are keeping tabs on activities and developments in his first 100 days in office. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Thank you for joining us on the program. Coming up on the show today, we're joined by Nigerian politician, businessman, and philanthropist, Chief Emmanuel Wanyawu, who is the President General of Aneze Indigbo. He joins us to discuss insecurity in the Southeast and what President Tinubu should do differently. Remember, you can join the conversation now on Twitter. Let's have your feedback on the issues raised, as well as the first few weeks of the Bola Tinubu presidency. We ask the question, What's your assessment of President Tinubu's one month in office? Remember, use the hashtag first 100 days, tag at TVC News NG and at Nifemi. Let's begin from the National Assembly now, where President Tinubu has asked the Senate to confirm the appointments of service, the new service chiefs. Uh, the president's request was read by the president of the Senate, Gautula Pabio, during today's plenary. The service chiefs for screening and confirmation by the Senate include Major General Christopher Musa, uh, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Tarud Lagwajaos, Chief of Army Staff, and Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, Chief of Naval Staff, as well as um, Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar, who is Chief of Air Staff. Uh, the Senate president said the service chiefs will be screened by the Senate in the Senate chamber on a yet-to-be-announced date. Let's talk to a National Assembly correspondent, Tijesu Adelye, who monitored proceedings earlier today. Tijesu, we hear the Senate referred Mr. President's letter uh, to the Committee of the Whole, where the appointees will be required to appear for screening in the absence of relevant standing committees. What happens from here? Look, I mean, I'll tell you that this is coming quite timely because if you recall sometime last week, the Senator held a debate, not uh, following a motion uh, on security matters uh, and, you know, the, the fact that it has festered for so long uh, with a lot of allocation being made to tackle insecurity and all the efforts being put and yet there is no change, there is no positive change in this regard. So um, the Senate is worried and is concerned, and part of his resolution was to find a day to hold a special session where they will also call in this service chief. That's right before the letter of the president actually came in today. Um, they actually resolved after that debate that they were going to invite this service chief to meet one-on-one -on -one with them and hear what their strategies will be, you know, to tackle the, the effect of this uh, of insecurity and also to ensure that it's being nipped in the bud. Well, this actually would not provide them another opportunity, you know, to hold that session. And from what we could recall from that debate, the president of the Senate actually said it's going to be an executive session, possibly an executive session. So we do not know if he's going to, you know, follow through with that, but we, we would get to see that, how that will plan, pan out in the coming days. But of course, this would afford them the opportunity to interact with this service chief especially, you know, also relate with them on how this insecurity have, has affected them and their people yeah. and how, you know, during the debate, you could see how they, they were lamenting and, you know, complaining bitterly of how their people are being afflicted on a daily basis, you know, lives are lost, properties destroyed, people displaced. You know, this will now give them that forum to come one-on-one -on -one face with these service chiefs and also to hear from their own point of view what they'll be bringing to bear and what new strategies they will be employing to ensure that, Indeed. you know, this thing of insecurity becomes a thing of the past and, right. you know, citizens can actually sleep peacefully with both eyes closed. Well, we're looking forward to that engagement with the new service chiefs. Some appointments were made earlier today for committee chairmanship roles. Walk us through the names, Tijesu. Yes, I do not have those names right now with me, but uh, nine special committees were constituted ahead of uh, when the 69 other standing committees will be constituted. These are actually a uh, uh, um, special committees that, uh, you know, require, you know, they require actually to be constituted at the moment. We have a, uh, there's a special committee on media, there's a special committee on public accounts, 
Special Committee on, on Senate Services, even the Appropriations Committee was constituted with um, the chairman being uh, Senator Adeola Olami Lekon. He is the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. And why that co uh, committee was actually constituted now is because the Senate said for, for matters that will require issues for appropriation, it's important to have that committee in place as it stands. And uh, so that is why you see that that is one major committee that was constituted with the special <clears throat> committees. Aside that, um, also his, his deputy is going to be Senator Ali Ndumeda. Uh, that, that is the chief whip of the Senate. He is going to be deputizing uh, uh, Senator Olamide. So I do not have the names of other chairman of the committees right here with me. But of course, when I get it, I will provide it to you, Nifemi. But uh, absolutely. Stand, we also nine have, special committees we, were we have the names scrolling. And we, we have the names on the screen. Subsequent, um, Yes. Senate meetings, we would see the constitution of the 69 other committees, standing committees of the Senate. We have the name showing on the screen, Tijesu. Um, um, the Senate president visited Senator Yari, I, I believe, um, a few days ago. What are you seeing on the floor of the House as to uh, the senators working together across both divides? Aftermath, what happened during the election? Yeah. Well, if you recall, the president of the Senate has said he is going to be a leader for all, and he has, uh, you know, been striving to ensure that he keeps to his words. Even during um, Senate proceedings, we could see where he tries to ensure that all sides are being heard and nobody is being marginalized, you know, both from the opposition, both from his own side, from the AP, from the ruling side. You could see that he's trying to ensure that everybody is carrying along and nobody feels left behind. Even after, you know, the election, you could see that he, he also has stretched out his hands, you know, to his colleagues to ensure that, you know, they work together and it is one Senate. He has, he has emphasized the importance of uh, lawmakers dropping aside all the differences, all their differences and, you know, focusing on the issues that affect their people. Mm -hmm. He has emphasized that Aside, politics is over, um, the elections are over, everything is over. What is in place now should be governance because the people want the, uh, um, a sucker, they, they, they want a sucker to their problems, and it is only fair for them to do that which they have been elected Absolutely. for. Yeah. And we could see all that playing out during a plenary, during other, you know. Um, a, a, I think over the weekend, we could see one of the legislators from the FCT going to this flood area where um, flood ravaged that uh, Lugwe area. She went out there to, you know, form of a, a, as a form of an outreach and to assess the level of damage and also the situation. It's so, early days that, um, for the 10th Assembly, yeah, Tijesu, to... and we are counting on um, that um, fruitful collaboration along lines. We'll see how it plays out in the coming days. Uh, correspondent at the Senate, Tijesu, thank you so much for talking to us.